Hi, I'm Jake with Heart of Reflections, and I'm here today with John, our pro butcher block installer. And we have the Beach Butcher Block today, and I'm so excited. So John's worked with us in the past. He's installed our maple, our birch, our walnut, and now we're working with Beach. Now, the reason we picked this out is the homeowner has a cabin, and in the summertime, it gets a ton of use. But in the wintertime, it's below zero when no one's in there. So we want to show you how we're going to transform this block into a really awesome kitchen application. And if you just stay tuned, we're gonna just show you just the overall awesomeness of Beach Butcher Block. Mm -hmm. What are your initial thoughts on this hardwood? Well, as far as uh, when it's shipped, it's, they're behind us here, they come in, the, this packaging is real well done. Uh, the corners are protected uh, and all the edges are protected. They're sealed in uh, uh, a plastic wrap uh, so when you take it out, you get this. They're generally they're all going to be in real nice shape. Uh, everything I've done coming from you guys has been so far. And uh, the right off the bat, you notice that this one uh, is a little bit uh, grainy. It's got a little raised grain, but you're gonna everybody's gonna sand them down when you're done anyway. Uh, what would you? Would you, when would you sand those down? Would you sand them like right now or w when's the right time? No, I would sand them uh, after I'm all done cutting because you're gonna have pencil marks, you're gonna have everything. Uh, and so you're gonna sand out your pencil marks when you're done, uh, you know, in reference points. So when you're, just before you install it and before you uh, seal them and, uh, and use whichever stain or anything you're gonna do. When this goes inside of a cabin, what are you gonna cut this with? Well, I use a, uh, um, I use Festool uh, track saws when I cut everything, uh, whether it's a miter for a corner or the, the cross cuts. Um, you can use a standard skill saw, but you wanna make sure you have a very good sharp blade. And if you've got a blade that you're not sure of, I would either have it sharpened or pick another one up. If nothing else, clean it with, oh. the, with the solvent. and and it'll act like a new blade for you. But if you don't use a good blade, you're, you may get a little bit of chip out on these. They're, they're dry enough when you get them that uh, compared to say some of the other woods that you're gonna get, your pines and stuff, because they are hard and, and typical in all hardwoods, if a good blade is important. Now, when you say chip outs, what does that mean to just the regular, the regular consumer? So along the edges, you'll get, it'll look fuzzy. Uh, and it could bring in just little little marks. It's gonna pull the grain away from your, from your ends. Now, when you cut this, do you cut like the bottom side to the top side, top side to the bottom side, does it matter at all? On this, it doesn't really matter. Using okay. a good saw blade, um, for me, it doesn't really matter. You know, when this comes out, this is unfinished right here. Now, when we put it into that cabin application, what do you, what do you think is going to be like the best thing to treat this with, especially if it's got a lot of traffic in the summertime and then there's no heat in the wintertime? Uh, good question. I've used uh, several different types. I've experimented as we've gone along, uh, whether just a straight butcher block oil uh, or, and some of them I use a polyurethane on, depending on the customer's preferences on lifelong maintenance on the piece. Um, with the uh this customer uh, wants no maintenance yeah. in the future so so what i'm going to go with on this one then will be a polyurethane uh and i actually use a, a floor finish on them because it's a little oh. bit more durable okay uh, they've got a, a the chemical uh comp composition of it is a little bit different and it smooths out really glass smooth uh you don't have to worry about brush marks when a you floor apply it. i've never heard that before i like mm -hmm. it i'm getting all these great tips today this is awesome uh, so, yep, and, and I've done that on several. Okay. Um, you don't want to set a hot pan on it because you're going to get a mark. But most of the time, you're not going to want to do that on a Formica or any other countertop either. Or you're going to leave a mark. Even a concrete countertops that were popular for a while, they would leave a mark. So, yeah, you're going to use a, a hot pad or something down. So, on these beach blocks, they come with this, this, this right angle in these corners, these sharp 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. How are you going to, what are you going to use to knock these down? What do you think right there? I'll use uh, an eighth inch uh, roundover bit in my router. Okay. Um, and that's there again. I'll do it after it's assembled because when you go into a corner, it'll, it'll take your corner right around with it. And if you didn't, if you went past it, you would have a notch. 
So okay. Um, and then also on the exterior corners, I will use a uh, I'll round those with just a jigsaw, or I'll I'll, I'll use a pattern and use my router to give you a rounded corner so that you know if you bump into it you're not gonna you know ding up your hip or something you know <laughs> well all right well i tell you what i those are a lot of great questions that we get all the time so i think the next thing we do is just start making these things into a kitchen countertop well let's do it <laughs> all right john we've got this beach block set up on a table what are we going to do well next we're going to be cutting a miter into the corner so that uh, everything stays nice and square when we come across the end this kitchen has actually got a U shape in it. And typically uh, for countertop people, they can be a nightmare because your walls are not necessarily gonna be parallel on the two sides. You don't necessarily have a 90 degree corner. Um, that's one nice thing about these kind of countertops with the butcher block. Uh, I'll cut my miter in here and we'll take off to the other side and the uh, it, when you get into your kitchen, you can scribe along the edge here, and we'll get into this when we get up to the cabin. Uh, and they're very easy to cut. A, a normal, like a farmaca countertop or something, if your wall's not straight, you've got to go in with a belt sander and you've got to really be picky uh, on these. They're really easy to work with because you're cutting a piece of wood. Now, so, I've heard I've heard miter joints are actually super hard compared to a butt joint. What do you? What do you think on, on about those two? Um, I like a miter joint. Uh, one, aesthetically for, for the looks. Uh, you'll see that it'll bring, when we get there, you'll see that it'll bring our, our uh, pattern in our uh, grains and in 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 the butcher blocks. They're gonna line up and, and take off around the corner. If you come in straight in a, in a butt joint like this and pretty soon you've got your other grains going this way, it just isn't aesthetically pleasing. Okay, all right, well, let's get to work. So for our miter joint, we've got, we're making a 45 degree angle. So we know that this is 25 inches wide on our butcher block here. You come up 25 inches here and I set up my track saw. You don't have to have a track saw, but it just saves me a lot of time and effort. Uh, but uh, now I'll cut it out for you and see what you got. If you're wondering, I always use a styrofoam underneath when I cut. That way everything stays flat. You don't have to worry about dropping anything. So that's what that's about. So when you set this up, and this is the piece I just cut off, your miter is going to come in and you'll notice that all of your blocks actually show up. They, they come right around the corner. So they, they won't always, depending on how many different pieces you've got, but uh, that's what you end up with. Your corner's coming right back around. Next, we're gonna show you how to use a, a domino to align this corner up when we fasten it. Uh, it's a hybrid between a uh, dowel and a biscuit joint. And if you don't have one, you can use either a dowel setup or a biscuit joiner. So what I'm doing here is I'm marking out where we're gonna be putting in the dominoes. And it would be the same if you're using a dowel uh, type of joint or a biscuit joiner. You're gonna just mark out where you're gonna be on your, on your two pieces for reference marks. And they don't have to be measured in. They can be random spacing. The, uh, a mate, what you want to make sure that you're not going to do is say down here on this corner, for instance, you don't want them to go so deep. You don't want to be out here where they're going to go through. That would, uh, that would ruin your day. So now I have the reference marks. I've got this adjusted for the thickness of the wood that we're using. That's, 
the one side. So these are the pieces that are, that'll fit in these uh, slots I just made and they'll line everything up for us. And I'm just gonna dry fit it right now without glue. Let's slide her back that way, Jake. Thank you. This is gonna align these two planes so that we're, when we go together with it with glue, we don't have one higher than the other one. They have movement in them sideways, so I can adjust this corner this direction a little bit if I need to. Let's see how she fits. like that. All right, John, so we've got our, our block here, we got our miter put together, so what do we do next and why do you get all this sandpaper out? Well, when you, you can feel this, and I don't know if you can hear it on, uh, on the uh, audio or not. You can feel how sound, uh, how that feels kind of rough, if you can hear it or not. Um, but you're gonna wanna sand that down. Uh, you can do it by hand. Uh, you know, with a nice flat block uh, and just always go with the grain. And you'll notice right away how much smoother, and this is actually a 100 grit paper. It's a little, little more than what we need right now, but for an initial knockdown, it works great to take off any of the, anything that's high. You're gonna wanna finish with a 180 to a 220 grit paper. And I've got that set up on my uh, professional sander here and I'll hit it a little bit and then we'll see if you can tell the difference on the audio or not. <laughs> So Jake, can you feel the difference in that from where we started already? Yeah, that makes a big difference right there, so. It doesn't take much to knock it down. And this is a 220 uh, grit paper on this sander. And, uh, and that's as far as you're really gonna need to go. Um, if you were using a butcher block oil, uh, a lot of times I'll put, a, I'll stay, uh, saturate it with the butcher block oil and I might go back with a 320 paper mm. and, uh, and then hit it again and you can get a glassy finish with that. But on this particular purpose, uh, on this uh, butcher block, we're just gonna use a, uh, a polyurethane on it. And so it's gonna fill any of those imperfections anyway, so. All right, well, we'll get it sanded out and uh, I think it's time to head to the job site. All right, we're here at the job site and John, our pro has put together the uh, butcher block in several sections. And I tell you what, over the next, few minutes we're going to go ahead and show you exactly why john decided to put together right here and then we're going to show this butcher block transforming this kitchen so the reason that we assembled our miters in the shop was because on each side here and on this side we've got uh lazy susan and there's no way to get up from underneath to put our buckles in, like on a Formica countertop, you'll have a bolt-in system to tighten that miter up. There's no way to do it in this kitchen. So we uh, uh, measured it up from that wall and we're, we've got a, we're gonna end up with approximately a quarter of an inch on each side and that should let us slide in in good shape and our tile backsplash will cover any gap that we've got along the walls. A tip for uh, prepping everything before you put your countertops in is they will screw from the, these corner pieces up. And I'll go through and I'll drill them all first, all the way around in each corner uh, to give you an idea of where you're at when you get underneath there uh, after the countertop's in. Another important uh, piece is 
with the screws that you select, these are a two and a half inch uh, cabinet screw, but you'll take it up and measure from the top of your cabinet up. We're only an inch above here, or, and so that'll give us a half an inch to our top of the table, so we know that we're not gonna go through the top of the countertop. You'll notice that we took out the drawers all the way around and anything that's in your cabinets. That way, when you're fastening from the inside, you're fastening the countertop back in, you've got full access all the way up. If your drawers are in the way, you're not gonna be able to fasten your screws in place. So when installing these countertops, uh, we always recommend that you use a screw up through the bottom and into the, into the countertop from your cabinets. We don't want you to use an adhesive like on many other types of uh, countertops that are out there. It just is too much of a bond and the countertop with being a butcher block has to be able to move just a little bit with the difference in temperature and humidity in your house. I brought in a couple of assistants to actually put this in place. Uh, it is going to be heavy. Uh, getting it in here, we're going to have to tip it up just a little bit, slide it back, and set it in place. Okay, over to me, or over to this side. Let's go down with it. I love it when a plan comes together. We've got our a little bit of clearance on the wall, like I said, but it's gonna be covered up with our tile backsplash. On this uh, longer section of countertop, it's gonna be 10 feet overall. And with these uh, butcher blocks, they come in eight foot sections, so we had to put a seam someplace. I prefer to put them right where your sink is because you've only got approximately two inches on each edge where you're actually gonna see a little bit of a seam in your countertop and that's the less the obvious spot if you're looking at your whole kitchen. You wouldn't want it out here in the middle of, uh, in the middle of a plane. Like we did on our previous video, we're using the domino system and I'll be putting in the dominoes. We'll glue these in and then we'll have our assistants bring over the other part of the countertop and we'll glue that in and I'll show you how to clamp her up. I do glue these in on both ends and on this particular piece we don't have to worry about glue out here in the center as much because that's going to get cut out when we cut the sink out. And you want to use enough glue to make sure that the whole surface is covered. If you don't have any glue, say if you went like this and there's no glue, that's a spot that's not going to stick together for you. So it is important to make sure the whole surface is covered with an even coat. And if you use too much, it'll scrape off and, or sand off. Another point is that if you, if you do get it up here on the top surface, just let it dry and then scrape it off. If you try to use a, a rag and wipe it off, you're gonna rub that into the grain of the wood. And when you go to put your surface on, uh, it's gonna show whether you use a polyurethane or you use a butcher block oil, the glue is not gonna accept that. Thank you. Let me put some more glue on the other pieces here real quick. Okay, we're close. And don't worry, we did glue these. These are cleats. And I, uh, we didn't glue them on, I should say. We uh, were screwing them on. And the screw holes are going to be where we cut out for the sink. So it's not a big deal that we're putting holes in the top of our butcher block. Just make sure that your 
not out here where your sink's gonna, outside of the line of your sink. And there we are, we'll let that dry. And when we come back, we'll cut everything out for your sink. And I'll finish radius in this edge. I didn't want to run my router when I radius these edges past here because it would make a, a dent. Now I can come back with just this little bit and not have a mess for the customer in their kitchen. So John, I've never seen anything quite like this before, using clamps to adjoin these two countertops. Can you kind of take me through why you did this? Well, sure. So in a typical application, you would use a long enough bar clamp to go from one end to the other on a, but in this case, they would have to be a 12 foot long bar clamp and there's not too many of those around. And so on here, all I did was I took some scrap pieces of wood. These are actually left over from another countertop we did. And so they're a good hardwood and screw them down and, and uh, bring your countertop seam together here in the middle until it's good and uh, you know, tight. You've got good squeeze out on your glue, which means that you had enough in there. And when we're all done, we'll just be able to take the clamps off and unscrew these. It's just another way to pull it together. One, uh, one thing I will mention though, if you've got a short piece and you're trying to do this, you're gonna to wanna to go over here to the ends and, and put a clamp here to hold it down. There is a chance that it'll try to pull up like this. And uh, if you had a small piece, it's gonna stay like that when the glue dries. So if I was worried about it, I would take and, and clamp both ends down here and over here. This one's heavy enough that it's, it's really not gonna be an issue for us. With the glue that we're using, we're gonna to wanna to leave this clamped up for about 24 hours before we put stress on it, such as trying to cut it uh, and really trying to move anything around. We're back. It has been several months since we uh, shot our last video, but hey, our kitchen is finished. So what we have here, we have beach butcher block countertops, we have beach shelving. On the countertops, we used a butcher block conditioner and we did that throughout all the countertops. We wanted more, of, more or less like a food safe work surface. And then for all of our shelves, we used a floor grade polyurethane for really zero maintenance. And we, it looks fantastic. We had a lot of fun doing it. I hope this video helped out a lot. Thank you for watching.